today we are going to discuss about the effects of uh, wastewater pollutants on the human life. Yesterday, in brief, we discussed about the harmful effects of the organic pollution that is present in the water because of CVH water, or uh, it might be uh, from the industrial wastewater. So the, mainly the sewage water contains various kinds of microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, parasitic protozoa, and worms. <clears throat> and these can cause various diseases like joints, cholera, typhoid, and dysentery. So in the uh, first slide of the yesterday's lecture, I discussed uh, various kinds of organisms and uh, what kind of uh, the diseases they can uh, cause and uh, what are uh, the various kind particular organisms name of disease and what are the symptoms of the disease we have discussed it besides that <clears throat> water pollution has uh, another source that is the industrial wastewater <clears throat> so industrial wastewater is basically the wastewater which comes out from various industries like chrome uh, industry, tanning industry, dyeing industry, electroplating industry, uh, steel industry, or any other industries, food manufacturing industries. So that industries have used various kinds of uh, processes, various kinds of chemicals, and uh, those chemicals also find a way in the wastewater that is generated in such kind of industries and they pose uh, various kinds of health impacts. So few uh, elements that are present in the industrial wastewater that might find their way into the <clears throat> receiving water bodies like lakes, ponds, rivers or that the water bodies which are still water bodies. Still water body means the water is standing that is not moving basically. But uh, <clears throat> if we talk about the fl uh, flowing water bodies like rivers, they uh, don't uh, cause much impact because the pollutants get diluted regularly because of the flowing water and it reaches, uh, it goes into the ocean ultimately. But in case of lakes and uh, other uh, still water bodies, these contaminants uh, get accumulated over the period of time if they uh, are uh, present in the discharged or effluent, uh, industrial effluent, I mean the wastewater generated by the effluents. So one of the most important uh, chemical uh, or uh, I might say heavy metal is mercury. Mercury is uh, basically that is found in everywhere like in water, soil and uh, air also because of certain uh, sources. So humans also use mercury if <clears throat> we use mercury uh, as an element so it is not harmful if you see uh, if we if you want to see the mercury uh, you can uh, go and uh, buy a thermometer the bulb of the thermometer contains mercury so when uh, we uh, put it in our mouth to check the fever so it expands so it is one of the uses <clears throat> and uh, i remember uh, in my childhood uh, the uh, women, particularly, uh, they used to buy small uh, drop of mercury for the hairs. I don't know what was uh, the reason they use uh, mercury in the hair, maybe for the dandruff or any kind of uh, thing. So, but how this mercury can pose an impact? Because it is already present in air, uh, water, and soil. How can it pose an uh, uh, health impact? Uh, this mercury uh, when it is converted to a particular element so uh, in earlier lectures i have asked uh, told you that mercury chloride is also uh, harmful but uh, when it is converted in methyl mercury methyl mercury means <clears throat> when mercury is reacting with methyl group so it uh, makes a compound that is called mercury chloride that is very dangerous for the humans so it can cause uh, toxic effects on the nervous system, immune system, and lungs, and kidneys, skins, and eyes. So this mercury chloride, uh, merc not mercury chloride, methyl mercury, uh, ye, uh, it is an organic pollutant. So it gets easily absorbed in uh, the fatty uh, tissues of the fishes or any other aquatic organisms, which is a part of the food chain. 
So when ethyl mercury finds its way into the human uh, body from uh, the food chain, for, for example, in this picture, you can see uh, there are um, that might be various sources of uh, mercury into the water. So it might be from the mines, it might be from the coal plants, it might be from the volcanoes. So when mercury finds its way into the uh, water, it gets converted into the methyl mercury by microorganisms because of uh, the <clears throat> anoxic conditions in the water so it gets converted into methyl mercury then this methyl mercury is uh, basically uh, it's it finds its way into the food chain so uh, from uh, the phytoplanktons it gets transferred into the small fishes oysters which are later on uh, 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 which are later on uh, food for uh, other organisms like <clears throat> trout or tuna fish and later on it gets uh, transferred into the other big fishes basically over the food chain so at any point of time like this trout fish or any other shark it gets consumed by the humans so gradually this mercury ethyl uh, methyl mercury gets uh, accumulated in the water bodies uh, <clears throat> not uh, in uh, various organisms in water bodies so it gets uh, deposited in uh, their fatty uh, tissues over the period of time maybe over the months or year then when the humans consume this uh, fishes they uh, it finds its way into the human body and it causes this kind of uh, the impacts on the human body like mm, impacts on nervous system digestive system immune system so this is one of the important and one of the <clears throat> significant case which was found in uh, the uh, the japan that was in the minamata disease we call it because of the mercury so uh, sometime it is uh, referred to as uh, Chisso Minamata disease, which is a neurological disease. Basically, you can see how the, because of the neurological disorder, how the limbs uh, or uh, how the four limbs and hind limbs of the person gets uh, crampled because of the neurological disorder. So the sum, uh, symptoms is ataxia, numbness of hands, feet, general muscles, because I am particularly talking about the Minamata disease. In extreme cases, it may cause insanity. Insanity means it gets uh, that we call in uh, Urdu Pagal. It in some Pagal bhi ho sakta hai because of the Minamata disease. Paralysis ho sakta hai, coma, death uh, within certain weeks. So this was first discovered in uh, the Minamata, Kuma, Kumamoto uh, Prefecture, Japan, 1956. It was caused by uh, the release of methyl mercury by the industrial wastewater uh, that was in nearby chemical factory just so uh, corporation from 1932 to 68 so during this period this methyl mercury got accumulated in this water bodies and later on they find their way into the human bodies uh, when the Japanese start consuming the fishes. Uh, fish, uh, seafood is very important uh, part of culture of Japan. So they, uh, when they start accumulating uh, the fishes, this mercury gets accumulated in their water bodies, uh, in their body fatty tissues, and it causes these kind of impacts. Second uh, kind of chemical is cadmium. It is also uh, called uh, the heavy metal basically cadmium uh, is present in uh, various uh, it, it can be from the various sources besides the wastewater or industrial sources it is uh, also found in the phosphatic fertilizers because phosphatic fertilizers are made from the phosphate rocks and the phosphate rocks have the significant amount a good amount of cadmium in that so when we apply the phosphatic fertilizers in our uh, agriculture fields uh, it also finds a way into the receiving water bodies through runoff or uh, it can be also uh, from the mining or industrial sources, urban. We use various kinds of chemicals in day-to-day -day life. So it finds its way into the water bodies and uh, from the same food chain, it gets, uh, <clears throat> it gets and it is entry into the uh, body of uh, humans. So 
Well, it basically uh, accumulates in various body parts like liver, kidney, and thyroid. It causes various kinds of uh, symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, hypertension, bone disorder, cancer of lungs and liver. Basically, these symptoms are common with other diseases also. So it's very kind of uh, difficult to to identify what are the basically what are what are the basically uh, causes of such kind of diseases. So there is. <clears throat> That's why when you visit a doctor and uh, you uh, ask for that, you have certain kind of uh, symptoms. So they ask a whole history of uh, your body, like if you have any kind of disease, what kind of food you are eating, what are your food habits and lifestyle, so that they can uh, diagnose what is the basically the idea, what are, what is the basically the source of that disease. So. Besides this, it can cause a painful uh, disease of uh, painful uh, painful disease of joints and uh, bones. That is called itai itai disease. Itai itai means ouch ouch means it is very painful. It, uh, the person which is suffering from cadmium toxicity is having bone and joints pain. So cadmium naturally occurs in also zinc um, ores, in lead, in copper ores in coal fossil fuels besides i discussed it it is also present in phosphatic rocks which is a very important uh, source of nutrient for the plants which we apply in our day-to-day -day, uh, in agriculture activities so besides this uh, when we apply this uh, kind of chemicals or uh, this can also find its way into the surface water bodies and ground water bodies and from that it can get dissolved with other uh, chemicals also and can change its oxidation states also so next one is the lead lead is uh, also present in uh, our air if you remember the criteria pollutants which i have discussed in air pollution what is uh, the <clears throat> what is the percentage or parameter what is the percentage of permissible per percentage of lead in the air so besides uh, present uh, in the air it also can be present in the water and it also can cause various kinds of uh, diseases when it is present in water bodies besides it finds entry in our bodies through air it also can uh, find its way in our uh, body through water so uh, mainly uh, the main source of uh, the lead in water bodies is basically the lead pipes. <clears throat> in earlier times, so before using the plastic pipes, nowadays PVC pipes in drainage, <clears throat> we were using the lead pipes. Uh, for joining two pipes, we use the lead. joints pipes ko join use and besides, it's used for faucets, plumbing fixtures uh, that I have discussed. Uh, pipes ko ke liye use hota hai. And it naturally finds its way into the water bodies. Uh, Egyptian jo civilization thi, uh, that also fall because of this. They you were using the lead utensils. So gradually over the period of time, lead got accumulated in their bodies. And they were suffering from various diseases like kidney uh, and reproductive problems, uh, blood pressure, and uh, other cardiovascular diseases. So, this uh, picture also uh, can uh, show how uh, uh, lead can find its way to the water bodies. So, when a wastewater is generated from any household, uh, maybe it uh, it has a lead because of the copper pipes or faucets, galvanized uh, pipes. So definitely it will find its uh, way into the water. Uh, and that water, uh, maybe the wastewater or groundwater, definitely uh, <clears throat> at some point of time, it might find its way into the fresh water also. So these are uh, the permissible limits of uh, i have discussed only few of uh, the critical heavy metals in this uh, uh, in the earlier slides but there are n number of he metals heavy metals which can cause various kinds of diseases like arsenic which i will be discussing in basically the groundwater pollution because it is it has a significance in groundwater so it is basically uh, sources fungicides pesticides metal smelters 
I mean uh, the anthropogenic sources. It can cause bronchitis and dermatitis. Besides, it, it, it causes a disease that's called black foot disease. So this permissible level should be not more than 0 0.02 parts per million. And uh, cadmium, I have discussed it. Uh, it's industrial source like welding, electroplating, pesticides, fertilizer, cadmium, nickel, batteries, which is common nowadays, nuclear fusion plants, and uh, it can cause kidney damage, bronchitis, and basically lungs uh, or get involved in this gastrointestinal disorder, bone marrow disorder, because this cadmium replaces phosphorus in our bones. That's why it causes itai itai disease. So it is concentration should not be more than 0 0.06 parts per million. And uh, lead, it is uh, also present in paints that we use in day-to-day -day life you know, at our homes or paints we use <clears throat> wherever we use for painting the cars at home. It also uh, it is also present in pesticides, smoking, automobile emissions, mining, and the burning of the coal. Besides, uh, one uh, uh, it can cause uh, liver, kidney, gastroid, same kind of uh, diseases. But there is a mental retardation in children also if the lead is present in uh, the body of the ch if it can find uh, its concentration is more than 0.1 parts per million in the children. Then manganese also, it is industrial sources and uh, inhalation or contact will cause damage to the central nervous system and its concentration is a little bit relaxed, it is 0.26 parts per million. Mercury, I have discussed it and its concentration should not be more than uh, 0 0.01. The zinc is uh, very common in our day-to-day -day life, uh, like zinc coating uh, on our uh, this galvanized the tin we use at home. So it is um, sources are refineries, brass manufacture, metal plating, and plumbing. So zinc fumes have corrosive effect on skin. It, got, it, it, it can cause corrosion on the skin, and also in uh, various acute cases. So there are two types, acute and chronic. Acute means uh, the concentration of pollutant is very high, but for the short period of time, that's called acute. But chronic is when concentration of pollutant is less, but the exposure is for longer period of time. For example, uh, if uh, any person is exposed to, uh, for example, lead for, uh, for example, five parts per million, but only for one day or two days so that that will be called a chronic that will be called acute uh, exposure or acute uh, toxicity of lead but if we uh, talk about chronic chronic it might be for example one parts per million but for one year for one month that is chronic it start get accumulating slowly slowly and it will slowly it, it is kind of a slow poisoning so here also in uh, acute kind of uh, it can cause damage to nervous membrane and uh, concentration permissible concentration uh, should not be more than 15 parts per million so if uh, if you see the permissible concentration as per the permissible concentration the mercury is more dangerous see mercury arsenic and uh, cadmium these are more dangerous as compared to other elements like lead or zinc because the permissible concentration is a little bit higher than this one. So when we talk about the permissible concentration, so different agencies have set up different guidelines. So here it is WHO, World Health Organization. They have different criteria uh, for setting up limits or should be the permissible limit in drinking water of certain elements. Then we talk about US EPA, United Nations uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Then uh, Indian standards, that is uh, Indian standard institution. And uh, Central Pollution Control Board, they have also uh, different kind of uh, parameters than Indian Council of uh, Medical Research, they have different. But mostly we uh, see the WHO is most acceptable because they have uh, framed the standards for almost all the elements. Uh, also ISI, uh, then for example, iron, 
uh, the permissible limit as per WHO it should be 0.1 milligrams per liter or parts per million. These parts per million ppm and milligram per liter is same. So here it is a little bit relaxed kind of concentration is up to 0.3 is normal. So like copper also in Indian standards copper is the regulations are a bit tighter. Mercury is same 0.001 cadmium also 0.005 for WHO a bit more tight as compared to Indian standards and also for chromium this is also one of the important heavy metals that can cause very serious health impacts so these are uh, you generally not do not need to remember these kind of standards but for certain uh, elements you need to remember because when you will be asked for certain in certain entrance examinations uh, what is uh, the permissible limit of for example iron as per as per who standards not as per isi no there might be you can find 0.3 also one also uh, 0.01 also but you have to remember what is the exact so if you write 0.3 as per who that will be wrong answer so there are different agencies it all depends upon the country policy and uh, if you if you can see indian standards are a bit relaxed as compared to who standards now uh, the important other uh, groundwater uh, this uh, pollution what is the groundwater pollution how it is caused so groundwater is basically uh, when we talk about the fresh water uh, the available fresh water, uh, almost 30% of the fresh water is available in our groundwater. So this groundwater is an important uh, source of water for drinking in most of the areas where surface water available is not surface water is not available, and also it is an, one of the important source for the irrigation where uh, for example in uh, India, Punjab and Haryana and or in Indo-Gangetic belt uh, groundwater is uh, withdrawn very <clears throat> at a very high rate for producing various crops like maize, rice. So over the period of time because of the use of various kinds of uh, chemicals of various activities, anthropogenic activities, this uh, groundwater got polluted. So maybe because of uh, low flow rate or a few bacteria bacteria basically they degrade the pollutants low oxygen uh, because oxygen availability is important for the degradation because when uh, oxygen is available so most of the chemicals get oxidized and they get neutralized they are in uh, anoxic state they cannot cause toxicity and also cold temperatures so in here in the picture you can see uh, what can be the source of groundwater pollution like coal strip mining runoff when we uh, go for coal mining some of uh, the water can come out that is highly acidic and that can find its way into the groundwater so it can increase the acidity of groundwater and with the increase in acidity of groundwater some of the chemicals might get available particularly the heavy metals arsenic because uh, they are in the different oxidation states when the pH changes, uh, the concentration, uh, the available concentration may change because of changing in the pH. And other activities like pesticides, it can also uh, be a source of various pollutants like pesticides, which I have discussed earlier, like DDT, benzene hexachloride, and other chemicals, and that can find its way into the groundwater. And gasoline uh, stations, uh, waste uh, lagoons, basically lagoons are the plants like sewage treatment plants that are treating the wastewater. From the seepage or uh, infiltration, this uh, wastewater can find its way into the groundwater. Or we go for the landfilling. Landfilling is basically where we uh, dump our solid waste into the uh, ground where we dug out uh, bit of cells uh, over the period of time uh, some leachates are generated because of the pressure those leachates can find its way into the uh, like here 
uh, landfills, leachates can find its way into the water bodies uh, if they are not properly managed or properly uh, dumped. So uh, this also can cause the groundwater pollution. Besides some uh, hazardous waste injection wells, if uh, we want to get uh, rid of certain wastewater, we uh, put inside the groundwater that also can cause the groundwater pollution. Besides, there is another that is called ground, uh, that is called ocean water intrusion, salt water intrusion. Basically, when we withdraw uh, the groundwater at higher rates, so there is a kind of vacuum, there's kind of empty space inside the ground. Air is in there, but it's still empty. So the salt water from the ocean start intruding into the groundwater and that also can increase uh, certain kind of elements like the water becomes salty, dissolved salt can increase, alkalinity can increase, hardness of the water gets, gets increased. Uh, usually the groundwater has good amount of salts, dissolved salts and uh, uh, if we go for a longer period of time, if we go for the irrigation from the groundwater slowly, the salt concentration which is available in the uh, groundwater gets accumulated on the surface of uh, our lands, uh, agriculture lands. So that also can cause uh, salt water accumulation uh, that is called salt uh, affected lands basically they it is a common problem in uh, the areas where the temperatures are very high evaporation rate is very high so there are n number of uh, the causes how a groundwater pollution can occur so here also uh, in other uh, way i can uh, explain you for example fertilizers pesticides they can find this way into the groundwater oil our storage tanks the oil can get leaked and it can find its uh, way into the groundwater or some chemicals uh, they get leached from the industries they find its way from the, into the groundwater or leachates from the landfills and all these chemicals they pose threat to the groundwater and make it unfit for the use to the human population might it be for the drinking purpose or other domestic purposes or industrial purpose? You might have uh, uh, often uh, heard in the news that Coca-Cola or other uh, uh, just cold drink brands, they have, are having the high pesticide concentration. Where from these pesticides come into the cold drinks? Basically, this industry, they use groundwater as a source of water for making cold drinks. So if that groundwater has high concentration of pesticides, definitely those pesticides will find their way into the uh, over cold drinks. So there was very important, uh, very uh, crucial kind of uh, allegations uh, to the Coca-Cola company uh, in New Delhi, I think. Uh, they hired uh, private uh, laboratories for testing the samples of the Coca-Cola. So one of the important agency is Central Science, uh, it is called uh, Science and something CSE. So they uh, say that the Coca-Cola company uh, samples, they contain high percentage of the pesticides, but other agency like Terry, the Energy Resource Institute, they also analyze the sample. They say there is within the permissible limits. So I mean to say that fertilizers and pesticides find, can find its way in our foods also. Not only from uh, it can impact our uh, drinking uh, water, but also the various kinds of the products which are uh, generated by using the groundwater, they can also get impacted. Here also salt water intrusion I was discussing when we withdraw this water. So this uh, the pressure of this groundwater gets decreased in here and uh, this uh, pressure it's problem in basically in coastal areas. So in groundwater, some elements which are very uh, critical, like fluoresces, that is caused because of fluorine. So fluorine is uh, one of the elements which is uh, needed, but in small amounts. If the concentration of fluorine increases, it, gets, uh, it causes problem. And if the concentration of fluorine decreases, it also causes problem. So there are two types of fluoresces. First is dental fluoresces. It is uh, a developmental disturbance basically uh, in the 
uh, when any human is in the developmental stage, it causes the problem. It uh, causes in the disturbance in dental enamel, which causes excess exposure to high concentration of fluorine. If the fluorine concentration is very high, the enamel is a protective layer on our teeth that gets disturbed. So there it can cause uh, stains, pitting, or molting of enamel. So gradually, our tooth can it can cause tooth decay. So it is uh, one of the important. Uh, I mean, uh, the symptoms of the increase in concentration of fluorine. So you can find the fluorine in our toothpaste to also, but it's within the permissible limit. If concentration increases, it can cause dental fluoresis. And if concentration decreases, and it can make our bones and teeth weak. So second type of uh, fluoresis is skeletal fluoresis. It is a bone disease caused by excessive consumption of fluorine. In advanced stages, it can cause pain and damage of bones and joints. So first one is dental fluoresis. It can attack the enamel of the teeth. Second, uh, in bones and joints, it's called skeletal uh, fluoresis. Second uh, one important is methanoglobinemia. It is basically uh, the excess uh, concentration of nitrate. Uh, um, uh, in available in the water basically it comes from the agriculture runoff when we use uh, fertilizers in our agriculture fields uh, from the runoff uh, this uh, nitrate can find its way into the groundwater and from that groundwater it finds its way in the uh, human body we can see this picture here also it basically decreases the oxygen carrying capacity of blood when uh, this uh, hemoglobin is replaced by methemoglobin, uh, means uh, methemoglobin. Basically, hemoglobin is replaced by methemoglobin. It decreases the oxygen carrying capacity. Same like how the carboxy hemoglobin, when the carbon monoxide gets uh, attached with hemoglobin. So here you can see the bluish color of skin because of decrease in the oxygen concentration. And the same patient have uh, recovered, and uh, you can see how the color changed. Uh, she's feeling uh, better in the second picture. So basically, it uh, impacts in the newborn babies, where it's called also blue baby syndrome. The tongue, lips are pale color, bluish color. So because that happens because only the lower amount of oxygen in the blood. So in adults, it also causes problems like breathlessness, the breathlessness because when the oxygen concentration decreases, we can feel that there is a deficiency of oxygen. Nusia, drowsiness, these are all symptoms of the methemoglobin. But I will be discussing what is a permissible concentration. There should uh, permissible concentration is about 45 parts per million. If uh, 40 more than uh, 45 parts per million are available in the groundwater, then it can cause uh, this below baby syndrome nitrate. So last one is the black foot disease that I have discussed. That is because of uh, the excess amount of arsenic in the uh, drinking water it can cause uh, i mean if we repeatedly uh, drink the arsenic contaminated water it can cause diarrhea thickening and pigmentation of the skin inflammation of peripheral nerves and lungs and skin cancer it can cause lungs and skin cancer also in case of chronic uh, that is long term exposure to the arsenic it can cause black foot disease this is the black food disease because of the arsenic. So in Taiwan, basically, in which blood vessels of lower limbs are severely damaged, resulting, resulting in gangrene kind of things. So arsenic is uh, also uh, the very important disease in some of the districts of West Bengal, because when they use the groundwater, the arsenic gets uh, oxidized from unavailable state to the available state, and it can uh, pose this kind of risks that's called black food disease so these are the various parameters that is for the drinking water uh, like color what is the maximum permissible limit as per indian standard and who so a ph uh, is like same total hardness hardness is basically the chemicals like magnesium calcium chlorine 
that is uh, permanent hardness and temporary hardness, then total alkalinity, uh, that is what should be the permissible limit, chlorides, uh, sulfates, nitrate I was talking because this is the reason for the black, uh, this is the reason for the blue baby syndrome. The permissible desirable is 45, maximum is also 45 and the WHO standards are 40, uh, 50 parts per million. Then I was discussing about fluorine. Fluorine is desirable, should be one uh, parts per million uh, or milligram per liter. But if its concentration gets increased or decreased, that both sides it can cause problem. Also, calcium, magnesium, and other chemicals, phenols. These were the.